and thank him enough. Please give a warm, warm reception. My emergency man, Evan Syed. You know, sometimes your day doesn't start off the way you wanted it to. It was about 11.05 that I got a call. <laughs> And Ron said to me, because one of the reasons that I'm here is, is to see the great Jonathan Winters, and, and Ron said to me, unfortunately, the man is, is not feeling well. Would you take over? And I, I said I would. I would do my best to try to fill in for him. So let, just forgive me. It's last minute, but I'm going to try to do my best to live up to, to what you're expecting. So as an 83-year-old man... Oh, no. If you're going to be this tough, we've got to work together. I am nervous. Can you tell that I'm nervous? I'm not usually... I, I am more nervous than Nancy Pelosi at a CIA briefing. <laughs> I am absolutely convinced the reason that Nancy Pelosi believes in global warming is because she sits there going, is it hot in here or is it just me? Which may, by the way, be the only time in recorded history, or at least the last 25 years, the words Nancy Pelosi and hot were said in the same sentence. <laughs> because I am convinced that the reason she believes that war is not the answer is because she looks in the mirror and says, Botox is the answer. <laughs> so as an 83-year-old man... no. Oh. Yeah, talk to me. I do. What, what a week this was as far as, uh, first of all, let me tell you this. We, last year when we met, we still had President George W. Bush as our president. Now we've got Barack Hussein Obama. That uh, doesn't really mean a bit lot to me. Nothing's really changed. I still cling to my guns and my religion. <laughs> Only now it's a few more guns and I pray a little bit harder. Isn't it amazing that, what is it, eight months after the election, the Democrats are still blaming Bush for everything? Do you see this? Nancy Pelosi put forth a, a, a bill the other day to change the name of the San Andreas Fault to it's all George Bush's fault. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'll tell you how petty they are. They're even blaming Bush now. They're saying he's the one who left the cake out in the rain. <laughs> Please get that joke. God, I love that joke, and thank you. That's all that matters. If one person gets it, just start the wave for me. That's all you have to do. You don't get it? There's a song, MacArthur Park. Someone left the cake out in the rain. Well, he was the one who did it. It doesn't matter. You know what? You're not wrong. I'm wrong. Sit there. It's all right. <laughs> oh, and Obama went on this world tour. How offensive was that? Where he continually said, everybody in the world is better than we are. He bowed to the Saudi king, is that stunning? No, I don't know, did he really bow? There's some discrepancy. Yes, he bowed? Because I'm not sure, I think maybe, perhaps, just the teleprompter fell over. <laughs> the guy goes around the world telling us, telling the world that everybody is better than we are. Europe is better than we are. Europe is better than we are, because in Europe, everybody speaks two, three, four, five languages. Well, of course they do, schmuck. They keep getting invaded. <laughs> right, Barack Obama really believes that lowering our defenses, taking down the missile shields, disarming is actually a bilingual program. Okay, remember, I wrote these jokes today, okay? Come on, just grade on the curve. Just be there for me a little bit. Because these people aren't very smart. They love to think they're smart. But Bush, you know, Bush may have been mispronounced nuclear, nuclear, nuclear. But he didn't need a teleprompter. But they love to think that they're so smart. They're not smart. They're idiots. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They're idiots. All right, somebody asked Barack Obama about Sunni and Shia. He said, I love I got you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> they asked him about Hamas he said goes good with pita bread <laughs> so here's what we have to do because it is incumbent upon us as Americans to reach out Gary where you're going I'm working here <laughs> Crow Gary walk out 
I'm a poisoner. Don't walk it on me. <laughs> it is incumbent upon us to try to reach out to the other side and find middle ground where we can't find middle ground. And I know you can't find middle ground with them. What about this? Where, where do we stand on driver's license for illegals? No? But what if we split it right down the middle? What if it was illegal for them to drive north, perfectly legal for them to drive south? <laughs> I think we could get the left to agree to waterboarding if we use Perrier. <laughs> how about gun control? By a round of applause, how many of you are in favor of gun control? Applaud if you're in favor of gun control. That's all? Just, just a few of you? How many of you, so you applaud if you're against gun control? Wow. So honestly, you think anybody who wants to have a gun should be allowed to have a gun? A crazy guy should be able to go into a store and go, Ugh, and they should give it to him? No, of course not. There have to be some rules. What do you think of these rules? Right down the middle. You, you cannot have a gun if you have a psychiatric record. Right? You can't have a gun if you have a felony record. You can't have a gun if you have a Barbara Streisand record. It just... We do need to find middle ground with these people, and I think the way to do it is, it's a matter of communication. I don't think we're so far apart, the left and the right. I think it's just a matter of that we don't know how to communicate with each other. What was that book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus? I, I, I think it's uh, Democrats are from Mars, Republicans are from Earth. <laughs> you just got the first joke, didn't you? <laughs> Because I think, look, if you say to the liberal that hijacking an airplane, slitting the throats of stewards, is murdering the pilots, and ramming civilian jetliners into civilian office towers, burning 3,000 innocent people alive is evil, they don't know what you're talking about. They don't know what the word evil means. What you have to do is tell them that just as the nose cone was entering the office towers, say it with me, it created a hostile work environment. <laughs> When you do that, they, they, they will absolutely, they, they will get what you are talking about. All right, I am getting ready to go. It is an honor, it is a pleasure, it is a privilege to be here. I am so, yeah. Aww. Well, I believe that July 14th at the Laugh Factory, you might be able to see more. <laughs> <laughs> I will say it's an honor and a privilege to be here this evening. I am grateful to, where was the Christian Jewish Coalition? The, the, thank you so much for being here. That means the world to me. Thank you, sir. Where's the 82-year-old man? Where's the 82-year-old man? Just give me a couple more drinks. You'll see. <laughs> I'll be talking like him. Um, it, it means so much because so many people misunderstand. On the left, they think Jews and Christians. I am closer to you as a practicing Christian than I am to my secular Jewish friends. Because Jesus, absolutely, because we share values. Because Jesus was, in fact, was Jesus Jewish? Something say yes. Yes? I don't know. Something say yes. Something say no. All right. On the yes side, he did live at home until he was 30. <laughs> That he took over and expanded his father's business. His mother thought he was God. <laughs> but on the no side, if Jesus were Jewish, doesn't that make Mary a Jewish mother? Is there any indication in the Bible that Mary's a Jewish mother? I wouldn't have said somewhere in the Bible, Jesus, please don't walk on the water, you just ate a big meal. <laughs> I mean, if Mary were a Jewish mother, would she have stayed in the barn? <laughs> but there actually is, and, and please, this, there is definitive, where are my biblical scholars? I know I've got my Jews, I'm a Christian biblical scholar. There is one line in the Bible that is considered by biblical scholars to be definitive proof that Mary was in fact a Jewish mother. Anybody know? Mary rode Joseph's ass all the way to Bethlehem. <laughs> Anyway, guys, thank you so much for letting me be a part of this evening. Thank you so much. I can't thank you enough. You were terrific.